Which is better, an image with obvious noise or an image with obvious noise reduction? I'm gonna pick the noisy image every time because viewers have been conditioned to accept a certain amount of noise for as long as movies have been around. Noise reduction, on the other hand, is one of the easiest ways for a colorist to inadvertently leave their fingerprints behind. So we need to find a way to noise reduce if we can, but never in such a way that the image is left feeling worked on. Today, I wanna to show you a couple of the principles that I use to accomplish this in my grading practice. Let's take a look here inside of DaVinci Resolve and talk about some strategies and some techniques and some principles for noise reduction. So I'm currently in a brand new project where I have not done any grading. And all I've done thus far is set up my overall color management and my template node tree here. If you don't know what those things are, don't worry. I talk about them a ton here on the channel. I've got entire videos and entire series dedicated to them that I encourage you to check out if you wanna learn more about the foundation that I'm going to be building on here in today's video. So let's take a look at this first image in my timeline here and start to set my primaries like I would always do at the beginning of a grade. So I'm gonna start exposing things up here. Let's say that even though the image itself is rather moody, I've actually decided I'd like to see a little bit more into that image. I'd like to open it up. I'd like to expose it up just a little bit like I'm doing right now. And let's go over to my ratio node here and adjust my contrast as well. Whoop, that's not the right node up here onto my ratio. And we're gonna start bringing in a little bit of contrast as well. So this is just some basic primaries that I've done that represents more of where I, or maybe more where my client would like to see this image go. I've opened things up a hair. And it's looking pretty good, but certainly after having done this, when I play through the image and when I zoom in a bit, I'm noticing quite a bit of noise, especially in my subject's face. That's the first place that I really notice noise and where I'm really gonna decide gosh, I think I'm gonna have to do something about that, right? So what do we do in a situation like this where we're starting to see noise in the image and we need to do something about it. We need to do what we can without tipping our hand, without making the image feel worked on. Well, a couple of principles that we're gonna talk about here today, but the first one is probably gonna be your least favorite one. No one likes hearing this advice, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway, because I think it's the most important of the principles that we're gonna be talking about today. That principle is to lower your expectations. Yeah, that's right, lower your expectations. When it comes to noise reducing, we need to recognize that an image like this, where I'm seeing this level of sort of standing chatter and noise in the image, it's never going to be pristine. It's not possible to get it there and have it feel organic in nature. I can completely smooth things out if I want to, but it's gonna feel completely worked on. It's gonna run completely at odds with the goal that I talked about at the beginning of this conversation. So the first thing we really need to do is lower our expectations. We don't need to get all the noise out in order to get some of the noise out and to make a meaningful impact on the image. And the other thing that we can contemplate when we talk about lowering our expectations is it may be a matter of lowering our expectations of what we can do with the exposure of the image. Because if you remember, I moved this exposure a lot, right? Like in that very first exposure node. So the easiest way to noise reduce this image would actually be just to back that down and kind of move back down closer to what I got out of the camera negative when I first loaded this image in here, okay? So a couple different ways that we can apply that principle of lowering our expectations. I know it doesn't sound fun. It almost sounds like cheating to say, well, you need to move the goalposts, but I promise you this is the most important principle of any of the principles we're gonna talk about today when it comes to noise reducing effectively in our images. That said, I'm gonna open my exposure back up and let this problematic noise sort of ride and be prominent so that we can talk about what we do when we are experiencing high levels of noise and we need to deal with them in the best way that we can, okay? So we've talked about lowering your expectations. Let's now talk about the way I actually handle noise reduction in a situation like this. I'm gonna go down here to the lower branch of my node tree and I'm gonna go over here to my noise reduction tab. Now. There are two main types of noise reduction here inside of Resolve, unless you're talking about a third-party plugin or something. We've got these two categories of noise reduction available to us in this noise reduction palette. The first is temporal noise reduction. The second is spatial noise reduction. Temporal noise reduction deals with time, right? Temporal noise reduction essentially looks at whatever frame we are currently parked on and looks one, two, three, as many as five frames backwards, and that same number of frames forward 
and analyzes each one of those frames to try to figure out, okay, what remains? What's something that stays consistent across those frames? What is the image, in other words? And then it's gonna say, well, I'm gonna pull that away and whatever is left must be the grain. It must be the noise and that's what I'm going to remove. That's how temporal noise reduction works. And on paper, it sounds pretty good, right? It sounds like a pretty clean way to extract the noise from our image. The problem is in practice, best case scenario, you end up with a frame rate or a tempo or a feeling of motion that kind of feels like you're watching a football game on your TV. It feels sort of interlaced. It feels sort of like 60 frame a second type of thing. So I generally will avoid temporal noise reduction in favor of spatial noise reduction, which is essentially blur. It's a fancy way of saying blur. And it's a way of saying blur that we try to in part in such a way that it doesn't obviously problematically soften out the image, okay? So let's talk about how I use the spatial noise reduction uh, option here inside of the noise reduction tab. For mode, my preferred mode is actually better. Faster does not look good, and I think enhanced doesn't actually look as good as better does. So it's a bit counterintuitive, but I like to use better. I encourage you to experiment with all three of these and find out for yourself, but my recommendation would be to use better. Next from here, we have our radius, right? So our radius is where we're gonna define the sort of overall scale of our blur. How large or small is it going to be? The larger it is, the more noticeable it is, the higher chance we run of leaving our fingerprints on the work as I talked about at the beginning of this video. So I'm gonna leave this as low as I can. My first preference is to do small. If small doesn't cut it, I'll go medium. If medium doesn't cut it, I will go large, but generally I wanna leave it on small if I can. And next we have our spatial threshold. All I'm gonna do here is try to use the least amount of this that I possibly can while still getting the result that I'm looking for in my image. Now, as we have already talked about, there's a lot of noise in here. So my normal go-to of trying to go with like say 15 or 20% on these sliders, it's not gonna work. We're gonna have to hit this image pretty hard in order to even get a serious uh, response out of uh, the noise reducer. So let's see what happens if we kind of play through the image at this 75% strength here. That's starting to look pretty decent. We're getting things cleaned up pretty well, aren't we? We could go all the way to 100 if we wanted to, but the other thing to look at is, where's the point where you're not really getting any additional benefit? You're not really cleaning the image anymore, you're just hitting it harder. To me, that was around 60, 70%. Past that point, I'm really not seeing much difference. I'm just pumping the system harder and not really getting much more benefit out of doing so. So I'm gonna leave my setting here somewhere kind of in the 70s and say that that's a, a good place to uh, you know, contemplate parking this noise reducer on my image. Now, from here, we've got a couple of different options that we can contemplate, but one that I will often break out, especially in situations where I'm really having to hit the image hard with quite a bit of noise reduction, and this for me is about as hard as I would hit an image. Like I said, I'm often trying to keep this slider down closer to like 15 or 20 as opposed to being up in the 70s like I am right now. But what I'll often do when I am trying to hit an image hard like I'm doing here is I will pair this noise reducer with a qualifier. Now, any of you who've hung out with me on this channel for a little bit might be aghast to hear me say I'm gonna use a qualifier, but I do use qualifiers from time to time. I don't love using qualifiers as a first line of defense because I think they are a very narrow tool, but in the right context, they're the perfect tool, and I do think this is the right context. What I wanna do is go over to my qualifier, and I'm essentially going to try to observe the reality of a digital sensor, which is that noise tends to gather down toward the shadows, down toward the floor of the light that was hitting that sensor. That's where we're gonna see most of that light. So right now I'm noise reducing up in this area just as much as I am down in uh, the toe of the image down here when I really don't need to noise reduce up here. There's not really any noise up there. So what I'm gonna do instead is go to my HSL qualifier and I'm gonna go into my highlight mode here and then I'm gonna go to my high setting here in the luminance qualifier and just start to bring things in like so. Just try to find kind of a decent mat where I'm affecting just the lower portions of the image and then I'm gonna crank up my high softness and make it nice and soft. And I'll just point out that even though I'm using a qualifier, which as I've said, I tend to have beef with because it's a pretty narrow uh, option in terms of manipulating the image, even when I do choose to use it, I'm trying to use it as broadly as I possibly can. 
So I'm not qualifying more than one parameter and I'm being as broad and soft with the single parameter that I'm qualifying as I possibly can, okay? So let's turn this highlight mode back off and just take a look at what this is doing to my image now and maybe even go back over to my noise reducer and try hitting things a little bit harder, like so. Let's just max it out at 100. And now here in the qualifier, I can evaluate just on the basis of the image, where is my sweet spot for this high point? So somewhere is around here, I'm hitting every inch of my subject's face. But if I go somewhere down around here, I'm getting a good bit of cleanup down here in the lower areas, but I'm not getting that sort of strange plasticine rendering in this uh, sort of uh, slightly higher tonal value up here on my subject's cheek that I was getting a moment ago. So I think that's a win. That is gonna help me sort of like bury what I'm doing a little bit more, if that makes sense, okay? So that's sort of uh, the, another technique that I will often use, especially when I'm having to hit the image harder, is I'll bring in a qualifier and really focus that noise reduction down into the areas where it matters, which tends to be the shadows and the lower midtones, right? So that's the other concept that I'll often use here. And the last thing that I want to show you is to think about an even more kind of extreme case. Let's turn our qualifier off for the time being. And let's say, no, really, we got to get like all the noise out of here. We really, really want to clean and sort of like reimagine this image at this exposure, at this contrast ratio. We want to get it nice and clean. We just can't stand any of that original chattery, noisy texture that we're seeing. We want to get rid of it. Here's how I would handle that. Right now, I have maxed out my spatial noise reduction, but I could actually add another one of this node. I'm hitting Command C. Now I'm going to hit Option S to add a new serial node and then hit Command V. And I just doubled up on my work here. I've just added two of these nodes like so. And I'm now accomplishing that goal. I have pretty well gotten rid of all of that noise in the original image. Now I'm kind of seeing like a more broad spatial chatter in here and the image feels quite odd. It feels worked on. It's kind of exactly what I warned against at the beginning of this conversation but we're only one more step away from a pretty interesting result. I'm gonna do another serial node, option S, and I'm gonna grab an instance of some film grain, okay? So let's go over here into my effects tab, and I'm gonna set my opacity for this kind of fine toothed 35 millimeter grain up to a one, and I'm actually gonna to go to my grain strength slider and bump that up as well. And then I'm actually gonna use that same qualifier trick to say, hey, I don't need to see all of this chatter that I'm seeing in the sky, I wanna flag this off and have it just affect kind of my lower mid-tones on down. So somewhere like so. And then I'm gonna soften out that qualifier in the same way that I did before and see how we've done. So if we take a look at this, the main thing that I'm noticing right now is I'm still seeing kind of a, a bit of like macro chatter from doubling up and maybe hitting this uh, lower noise, the second noise reduction, I should say. Uh, perhaps a little bit too hard. So I'm gonna try backing that off to like 33. But other than that, if we sort of step back for a second, which is really important to do when you're noise reducing or performing any other grading task in Resolve, if we just step back, grab the three adjustments that we've made thus far and look at where we started, like that's a win. That's a lot better, right? And this last technique that we're looking at allows me to really do away with virtually all of that original noise that I might just find really, really unpleasing or problematic and replace it with a, a more sort of cinematic type of noise, i.e. film grain, which by the way, is exactly what grain is. Grain is analog photochemical noise. It just so happens that as we talked about at the beginning of this chat, when we said that viewers are kind of conditioned to accept noise, viewers are very conditioned to accept film noise because it's been with us for so long. So the net result of really hitting this noise reduction hard and then adding some film grain back on top is that, yeah, we still got to live a little bit of noise, but it's a lot nicer than the noise that we got out of the camera itself. So these are some of the main principles, concepts, techniques that I like to use when I'm thinking about noise reduction, when I'm faced with the need for noise reduction in a grade. And uh, they really serve me well and allow me to accomplish the goal that we discussed at the beginning of this conversation, where we say, hey, it'd be great to get some of this noise out of here, but the first goal 
is to leave no fingerprints, right? If the image feels worked on, if someone knows what you're doing, you're no longer doing it. So we wanna operate like color grading ninjas and fly underneath people's radar. Everything that we've talked about today is a, a good sort of set of strategies for accomplishing that goal. We're gonna go deeper on this subject in our next session of Grade School, my uh, YouTube Live that we do on Friday mornings, Pacific time at 10 o'clock. So I encourage you to come join me for that if you have further questions on this topic or you wanna see us go deeper into it than we have had the chance to go in this video. It's my favorite part of the week, answering questions, talking about these topics, getting to go deeper. But this is a great start here and I'm looking forward to seeing you in Grade School on Friday if you wanna join us. See you then.